So you're new to Blender, you've figured out how to do some basic modeling, you've kind of figured out the user interface, how to move around, but one of those things you've just never really gotten to was cloth simulations. Um, you don't really know where to begin, it seems all daunting and confusing. So in this video here, this is gonna be a beginner's guide to cloth in Blender, we're using Blender 2.91, and I'm gonna be covering all of the basic things you need to know in one video. It's not gonna be overly complicated, I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible to allow you to make something like what you see over here. So we're gonna be covering how to actually add a cloth a simulation to an object in this case it's going to be a sheet i'm going to show you how do we make that cloth interact with objects in our scene because obviously you don't just want it falling through um, an object you want it to interact so i'm going to be going through that in detail i'm going to show you how you can pin certain parts of the cloth because maybe you don't want the whole thing to fall you want certain parts to kind of stick maybe you're making like um, curtains or something and not only i'm going to show you how to pin certain groups i'm also going to show you how you can animate or pin those pin groups to an object so you can animate that object. That can give you all sorts of possibilities in Blender. So this is gonna be a beginner's course in um, cloth simulations in Blender, Blender 2.92, um, and I'm gonna keep it as basic and simple as possible. Um, and I will be making an example blend file available on my Patreon. So without wasting any more time, let's get into this little tutorial. So go ahead and open up a new scene in Blender. So I'm using Blender 2.92, as you can see here. And um, to start off with, we're just actually gonna use the default cube. So we'll leave it in, in this case. So I'm just gonna get rid of this lamp. I'm just gonna select it and delete it. I don't know why, I just feel like deleting it. So we're gonna then select the actual default cube here, all right? And we're gonna just tab into edit mode. So just go into edit mode. And with all of this selected, all of the geometry, if you just simply hit Control B or Command B, you can bevel this like so. So we're just gonna bevel it and then roll the middle mouse button just to add in a few more segments, so just like that. Okay. The reason we're beveling it, because if we were to just use the, um, let's just go back into object mode by hitting tab. If we were to actually run a cloth sim simulation on top of this object here and it has sharp edges, that could like not work as well as it would with a bit of a rounded beveled edge. So now we have this over here. We're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to our mesh options. We're gonna simply just add in a plane. So a plane is one of the best things to get started with whenever you're doing cloth. So let's go G, Z, and just move it up. So G, Z, and move it up. Now to make this look a little bit more interesting, so it's not just landing on top of this the cube here, we wanna just scale it. So let's just, with this plane selected, hit the S key on our keyboard, and just drag your mouse, and you can see you can scale it up. So I'm gonna scale it up about that much. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. This doesn't have to be precise, so just something like that. Now whenever we're working with um, physics simulations in Blender, whenever we scale an object in our object mode, you can see up here we're in object mode, if we hit S to scale it, we really need to come in here, hit Control A or Command A, and we need to apply the scale. And that's gonna be important because our physics simulation is gonna be relying on, so if you hit the N key here and you go over to your items and you go to, over here to the vectors here, right? You can see here if I hit S and I scale it, you can see those scale vectors there are changing. And our physics is gonna be looking at these sort of vectors here to determine how it's gonna do things. So always make sure whenever you scale something, especially when you're doing cloth, you wanna go Control A or Command A and apply that scale. And the same thing goes to objects that it's gonna be interacting with. So for example, if we scale this cube, we'd wanna go Control A and apply the scale, okay? And you can see here if we select this um, plane here, we can see all of these um, vectors here on the scale are set to one because we want control A to apply the scale. So it should all be correct. Once you've done that, we need to actually give this some geometry. Now we could actually run, if we hit Z and we go into wireframe, you can see with this plane here, there is no faces here, it's just four verts. If you go into edit mode, you can see one, two, three, four verts, okay? So we could add a cloth to that, but it will just fall like some sort of sheet on top of it. So we need to add in some more geometry. Geometry is gonna be one of those very important things you're gonna to have to always take into account whenever you're doing cloth simulations. Now, a simple way to do it with a plane is just with everything selected in edit mode, simply right click, click on the subdivide button here. Then you're gonna see over here a subdivision tab are popping up, just click on that to open it up. And you can see here a number of cuts. Now you can make this whatever you want, but I would recommend at least 22. In this case, I'm gonna go with 50 because um, I've got a little bit more of a powerful system here. If you're working on a laptop or something, you're not very confident, you can get away with 22 or 30 even. Um, it might not be as nice results. I would actually recommend if you wanted to, bumping this up even to maybe 70 um, cuts or so, but I'm just gonna go with 50 for now for this purpose. Then I'm gonna tab out of edit mode. So now we have an actual plane here. 
we hit Z, we're going to wireframe, you can see it has all that extra geometry now and it can actually fold around this cube. So let's, with this plane here selected, we're actually gonna go over here to this tab down here. That's our physics properties. That's always where we're gonna be working with our physics. So click on that. You have the plane active here and you're gonna see something here. You're gonna see a few other things, but the one we're interested in today is gonna be the cloth. So let's click on the cloth. And by default, out of the box, it's gonna give you a pretty good cloth setup right here. In fact, if I were to hit the space bar, you can see I'm in frame one here. If I were to hit the space bar and play this animation, it's working. Now, it's not actually interacting with the cube. I'm gonna to get to that in a second, how we add that sort of interactivity there. But for now, we're just going to go to frame one and we're gonna um, grab the cube over here and we're gonna go over to our physics tab as well. Make sure you're here. And this time, we're not gonna give it a cloth. We're gonna give it a collision. So now this cloth knows that it has to interact with this object here. So if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, now we're gonna see the cloth is actually interacting. And that's all really good. So if we just select our cloth here, select the cloth and go back to frame one and just hit the space bar again, you can see it's working beautifully, but the only issue here is that the cloth is actually going through itself. And you can actually see over here the cloth penetrating through itself. So what we need to do if the cloth selected is go to our physics tab and we're gonna be talking about the next thing. And that's gonna be self collision. So let's go over down here in our cloth and we're gonna be going to the collisions down here. So you can see a tab called collision, just drop down here. And now you're gonna see there is a um, thing here called object collisions. By default, that's tick. That's what enables us to interact with that collision object there. But we're gonna go down here and we're gonna click on self collision. Now, one of the reasons this is disabled by default is because whenever we enable self collision, there is more calculation that goes into the simulation. Thus, it will kind of um, increase the time that this has to cache out. So if you go ahead and hit that, and we go to the first frame and we hit the space bar. This time it's gonna take a little bit longer to calculate, but you can see now the cloth is not going through itself. And that's giving us a little bit more of a realistic cloth simulation here. And while we're at it and we have this cloth selected, just go to object mode and just enable shade smooth. So we have some sh smooth shading on this here. So now we have a proper cloth simulation. And one of the nice things is whenever we have a cloth simulation in Blender, and we can actually go to our modifiers. And you can see here, we now have the cloth modifier here. If we go add modifier, on top of that, we can add a subdivision surface modifier. So now we have a subdivision happening on top of this. Now you could, for a nicer result, put the subdivision on top of the cloth and then go to the first frame again and then hit the space bar. But now it's gonna be looking at a lot more calculations here because it's actually taking into account the subdivisions as well. So it's working with a much denser geometry. So for me personally, um, you could go with something like this if you want really nice results. You can see here we're getting a lot more detail in there. But for me personally, I'm just gonna keep it underneath the cloth for now. And that's usually how I work with my cloth simulations. I'd rather actually just go in edit mode and give it some more subdivisions rather than relying on a subdivision surface modifier in front of the cloth. Okay, so. Now I'm gonna teach you um, another thing. And by the way, if you just want to like grab an object, if the object that you've added a collision to, if you actually go Shift D to duplicate it and you move it over to the side or something, that will have the same property. So just make sure if you add any new objects in here, for example, if I added an, another plane, um, just make sure to always add that collision as well. So any object you want the cloth to interact with, make sure to give it a collision and it should work just fine. So you can see here, that's working really good. Um, what I'm gonna do here just quickly, so you can see just this little example scene. Um, I'm gonna just come to my end frames here because I don't want an animation that's too long. So I'm just gonna go with something like 70 frames. You can do whatever you want. Now, if I were to actually save this, which I'm gonna quickly do, and I were to reopen this, you can actually see down here, if we go to frame one, there's gonna be this blue bar that forms when we run the simulation. And that's actually our cache. So if you select the cloth, and you run the simulation, you can see this blue line appearing. That's actually caching in, but it's not gonna save that cache. So what you need to do is actually bake it out. So select the cloth, then you go over here to your physics tab, under your cloth, obviously, you're just gonna simply go down to the section here called the cache. And all the cache does is it's just gonna like take your starting frame. In this case, we we'll leave it at one because we're starting at one. But like I said, I changed the end value here to, to, to 70 but you can change it to whatever you want. So I'm gonna also make the cache here 70 because there's no point having an animation that's 70 frames long, but unnecessarily caching it out to 250 frames. So make sure that these two numbers here match up with these two 
values here as well. Now, once you've done that, go ahead and just bake it. And now it's gonna bake this into your blend file. Just keep in mind, whenever you bake anything to your blend file, that blend file will be a lot bigger. So if you have a, a blend file that's like a megabyte big, if you bake something out, it might be 120 megabytes big. So just keep that in mind whenever you're working on projects and just check out how much storage you have on your drive. So there we have it. So now we can play this in real time. Now, one thing I'm gonna, um, stress here is once you've actually baked this out, if I were to grab one of these collision objects here and I just went G, X, move it over to the side and I play the animation, it's not going to be um, redoing that because now it has all of this cloth information here baked in. So whenever you change something around like that, you have to actually come over here and select the cloth again, go over to the cache and delete the bake and then rebake it, okay? So keep that in mind. So now I think I've covered the very basics of cloth in Blender. Just one more thing I um, will get into here before we go into the next stuff. It's just under your cloth as well. One thing I didn't mention, you're gonna see over here, if I just quickly delete the bake, you're gonna go up to the very top, you're gonna see something called the quality steps. The higher you set that, the better quality your simulation will be. Once again, that is gonna be make it more processor intensive, so more time, just keep that in mind. And also the exact same thing, if you come here to the um, collisions, you can set the quality up here as well for the uh, how it interacts with itself and with objects in the scene. But that, once again, that's also gonna take more um, computing power so just keep those things in mind um, so now we have that out of the way I'm gonna start um, touching the next things here and by the way I know I've been going really slow kind of emphasizing some of the same points but this is targeted towards beginners with cloths I really want you to understand anything that's not what that's why I'm not rushing through this I'm just taking my time so let's go back to the first frame okay now I'm going to show you how to pin things because maybe just maybe you don't want the whole cliff to, um, cloth to fall, you just want one side of it to be pinned. So let's go into edit mode. And I'm on my first frame here. We need to go to our object data properties over here. So click on this tab here, and you're gonna see something called vertex groups. Now this is super simple. Simply select the vertex by clicking on it, or you can hold in shift and select multiple vert vertices. So for example, I might select one here, here, and then if you go shift alt, I might even select a whole edge here. And then just hit C and hold in my middle mouse button and deselect some parts, whatever. Just just for example's sake, just select a few random verts, um, just for an example. And once you have those verts selected, you can go over here to this vertex group and hit plus. It's gonna create a group and then you're gonna click on assign. And now it's gonna assign those to the group. In fact, if you hit A, a twice to deselect everything and you click on this group and you click select, you can test it and you can see those all appear now. So now all we simply have to do is tab out of edit mode. We have a group we can work with. In fact, let's just double click on it and call it pin. So we know it's gonna be our pinned um, groups. Let's go over back to our cloth simulation here. We have a cloth selected. And all we simply have to do is come down here to the shape. So if you come down here to the shape, just drop that down and you're gonna see something called pin group. So just click on this and there you can see our pin group. So just select it there. Now if you're on frame one and you hit the space bar, you're gonna see that all the cloth is falling except those ones that you've selected to be pinned. How cool is that? And at any time, you can simply come in here, select any vertex you want or how many ever you want. Just go over to your object data properties and assign them. And maybe there's some you wanna get rid of. So you can just select those ones and you can just hit remove and remove them. And now they're all gone. So now if we go out of edit mode, go back to frame one and we hit the space bar we can see that's all changed. So it's such a cool non-destructive way of working. So now that I've taught you that really basic thing, let's get into the next really awesome thing. And this is how you actually control your pinned groups. Not only can you pin groups, but you can attach those pinned groups to an object so you can actually control your, your cloth itself. This could be super useful if you're doing like maybe a soldier waving a flag in a battle or just anything where there needs to be movement of a fabric against an object. So let's go over to frame one, tab into edit mode. I'm gonna hit A to deselect, to select everything here. So I want everything selected, and I'm gonna go and remove it from this pin group. So now nothing is assigned. And I'm gonna go shift alt, I'm just gonna click on this edge over here. So if you go into your front view, just this edge here, loop select this edge, shift alt and click on the edge, and it'll loop select this whole row of verts. And with that pin group selected, we're just gonna hit assign. And now all of these edges here are assigned. But before we go into object mode, I'm gonna go hit F3. And over here, we're gonna type hook. So just type in hook, super simple. 
And then we're gonna go hook to new object. It's gonna be the first result here. Just click on it. And now you're gonna see an empty appears here. So let's tab out of edit mode. And if we now select this empty and we hit G and we move it, you can see those vertices are connected to that. So now if we hit the spacebar from frame one, we can see if we hit G and we move this, we can actually control the cloth, but nothing is happening at the moment. And that is because we need to actually select the cloth and our modifier stack arrangement is super important. So just go to your modifier and we always wanna make sure that whenever we're gonna hook cloth and we wanna simulate it, to always grab the hook modifier and drag it above our cloth modifier. And that hierarchy there is super important. So now let's go back to frame one, hit the spacebar, and now if we actually move this, you can see in real time, I'm actually moving my cloth around. I can actually control the cloth. So I could literally animate this guy going back and forth in some sort of cool animation. In fact, let's quickly do that. Um, so just to make it look like it's not holding onto thin air, I'm just gonna quickly go Shift A. I'm just adding in a super simple cylinder. Going to my front view by hitting one and an S to scale this down. Hit Z and go into your wireframe and then just with this cylinder selected, I'm gonna go G and move it over to the edge here or to where that empty is. And then I'm just gonna go R, X, nine, zero to, and hit enter. And then S, Y and I'm gonna scale that along the Y just to create a bar like that, okay? So now it actually looks like it's attached to something. So on frame one, I'm gonna select the cylinder, holding and shift, I'm gonna select the empty, and I'm gonna go Control P, so Control P or Command P and object, keep transform. So now this bar is parented to the empty. And I'm also gonna select the bar itself here, and I'm just gonna go to my cloth settings here, and I'm just gonna give it a collision as well. So now let's run the simulation from frame one, and now it actually looks like that bar is like what it's holding onto. And that looks really cool. And we can once again grab the empty here and just move it around in real time and have a look at that. You can even rotate it. Look at that. Real time um, things going on there. But let's quickly animate it. So with this empty selected, let's go to frame one. Hit I and insert a location keyframe. Then move over to frame 30. Then we're going to go G. X and we're gonna move it over. Don't worry if the cloth doesn't follow along. Move it over to here and then G, Z and move it down a bit. And then we're gonna go I and insert a location keyframe, okay? And then we're gonna go over to frame 60 and we're gonna go G, Z and move it all the way up to here and then G, X, move it forward. You can move it anywhere, it doesn't really matter. And then you're gonna hit I and insert a location keyframe. So now we're gonna have this. Okay, if you go to frame one and you hit the space bar, you're gonna see this. So now you can see we have this pole here that's dragging our flag or our cloth around on the surfaces and it's all interacting. And let's quickly just give this a cache. I'm gonna quickly, in fact, I might just increase the end value here to 90. And I'm just gonna go select my cloth. I'm gonna go back to my cloth settings. I'm just gonna quickly go back down to the cache again. And this time, because I've updated the end value here, I'm also gonna make the end value of the cache 90. All that is saying from frame one to frame 90, which is this, these values here, we're gonna cache that data into the blend file. So let's quickly hit bake. And it should happen relatively quickly. It depends on your computer as well and what your settings are and the quality, but it should do it relatively quickly. Just cache it into your blend file. And once that's done, obviously just go file and make sure to save it. Always save when you've cached. Now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see we have this guy here pulling that cloth around. So that is how you um, control the cloth. And you can add multiple hooks to an object. So I hope that I have covered kind of like the very basic questions you might have had about cloth and blender. Like I said, this isn't a beginner's blender tutorial, it's just a beginner's cloth tutorial. So if you're new to blender and you already understand most of the modeling and interface, this is just showing you how to get started with cloth. If you've never touched it, you don't really know what the different things do. These are the main four or five things that I've covered here that are gonna do 90% of the stuff you wanna do with cloth in Blender. So I'm gonna be making an example file available on my Patreon, you can check that in the description below. But I hope this has been useful to you and it kind of just gives you something to work with. I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial and um, stay safe out there guys.